Hey, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This is the show all about farmer's markets. Whether you're a farmer's market manager, a farmer, or a food producer selling at farmer's markets, or just a curious farmer's market shopper, this is the podcast for you. In our interview, Chef Mike gushed about his love for farmer's markets. He clued us in on a day in the life of a busy chef and explained how chefs can make connections with local farmers. Hi, I'm one of your hosts, Bridget Myers. I've spent years as an on-site farmer's market manager, and I've done it all from popping tents to vetting vendors. And I'm another one of your hosts, Justine marzoni Mead, hot sauce maker, farmer's market vendor, and event facilitator for the Intense Conference. And I'm Kat Fields-White, director of San Diego Markets, still an active farmer's market manager, and founder of Intense Business. Welcome back to Tent Talk. This week, we caught up with our guest, Chef de Cuisine Mike Reedy, straight from the kitchen at the much-celebrated Ironside Fish and Oyster in San Diego's Little Italy. Before Ironside, Chef Mike worked at Melise in Santa Monica and Charcoal Venice with the two Michelin star L.A. chefs, Josiah Citron, and he became a regular at the Santa Monica Farmer's Market, known for serving chefs. Last year, San Diego native Chef Mike moved back to work at Ironside, which is known for fresh ingredients and a daily changing menu that features the catch from San Diego Bay and local fishermen. Chef Mike is so known for his love of fresh ingredients, it's even earned him the nickname Farmer's Market from his kitchen colleagues. Hey Mike, how you doing? Good, good, good. Can you hear us okay? Can hear you. Can hear us? We can hear you. I got That's you fun. loud and clear there. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm here with Kat and Bridget. Hello. In the Tent Talk Ooh. studio. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool. So, um, Chef Mike, I was wondering if you could just start a little bit by telling us about your culinary background. Um, did you always want to work in restaurants, or how did you land in the industry? All right. Yeah, so um, my uncle... Patrick, uh, he's a chef, um, and he was kind of back in the, the ski country there in like Utah and Colorado and kind of hopped around in different hotels and, and, uh, we would go out and visit him and ski. And I just thought that was the coolest thing growing up as a kid. And my mom was, was a good cook. And, and, uh, there was a point when I was probably like maybe 10 or 11, where he, when he opened a restaurant in Te- Temecula, it was a barbecue restaurant. And I just thought I worked in it as a, you know, bussing tables and stuff. It was real like plastic uh, basket, like <laughs> uh, peanut shells on the ground. It was a cool little <laughs> barbecue spot. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. And, and uh, in high school, uh, I had the opportunity to work at a buddy's restaurant and uh, I started bussing tables. And uh, I was, in, it was an open kitchen and it just, the guys in the back look at they were looking like they were just having a grand old time back there and <laughs> I was like, I wanna do that and then uh that was that was kind of you know, made that, that switch over and uh, and I was like maybe fifteen started cooking and that was it basically. I just kinda of kept with it. Awesome. And here I am, yeah. That's great. So where were you before uh you joined the team at Ironside? Um, I worked for just Josiah Citrin uh, in Los Angeles, uh, on the west side, uh, he has a restaurant in San Monica called Melise, and uh, another restaurant in Venice Beach called Charcoal. Um, so, and then Melise was just kind of like more fine dining restaurant. Been there for like maybe uh, 16 or 17 years when I was there, and uh, then he opened uh, Charcoal about you know two and a half year, years ago, three years ago, and that's um, kind of in the name. Everything was live fire, charcoal. So it was, it was fun. Great awesome. time. Awesome. So when yeah. you're in the kitchen, do you have a station that you prefer working at? Like, what's um, your what's your thing? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say I have a certain thing. Uh, I always tell the guys. Uh, I always try to lead by example. So I'll literally do anything it takes. <laughs> uh, if I need to wash dishes or, you know, uh, sweep the floor, uh, I'll just... I won't, I'll just do it. Uh, there's no questions. So, and I think that, you know, leading by example, that's, that's the way you should do it in my eyes. So. I feel like those awesome. are the best kind of chefs. Like they are so well respected if you're doing a little of everything instead of just like dictating what's going on in the kitchen. Right. So yeah, it helps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think so. And, and people will just follow you and you yeah. don't need to, 
you don't it, it's you don't need to like uh, uh, scream and yell and if if you're if you're well respected and people want to work with you you know they'll be down for the cause and they'll they'll follow suit if they see you sweeping they understand it's got to be clean and so on and so forth so yeah people you can get people to do a lot just because they want to please you was josiah citron uh i mean he's got two michelin stars i think was he a yeller was he a classic kind of crazy chef or was he somebody oh, that you just wanted to please <laughs> I, I don't know if i should say this but <laughs> this is pretty recorded uh, he's, he uh at that level you have to have an extreme amount of focus and to understand that you have to you have to be very intense gotcha and, that's a nice way to put it good job yeah, very diplomatic and, there. What, and and at that level it's like you got to do whatever it takes and and that's kind of the mentality that i have now because of him so i'm grateful so that's great good or good or bad you got to look at it you know all it's all it's all good it's all learning so whatever whatever mistakes or whatever you made it's okay yeah. it's okay to make them so. yeah 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 so um, kind of along with that, do you, when you're in the kitchen, do you have any favorite food categories that you're working with, like seafood or meat? Or are there ingredients that you absolutely can't go a day without cooking with? Uh, definitely. Um, for some reason, I really like scallions. I, there's something hmm. about them. Oh, hmm. That's one thing. Obviously, butter. I mean, we all chefs butter. <laughs> yeah. Everybody likes butter. <laughs> uh, some good olive oil. I really like, um, I like fleur de sel mm-hmm. as opposed to yeah. like. Maldon or whatever I just like that um, and then just like lemon juice I think you need all that you know yeah. some acid salt butter scallions for some reason is one of my uh, my things but other than that I mean kind of uh, whatever is the freshest whatever is you're like just the best whatever is peak at that moment you know I would say yeah. So you almost had a book title there, Fat Acid Scallions. <laughs> yeah. Fats, acids, yeah. and scallions. Wait, isn't there that book, um, yeah. Fat Acid Salt? <laughs> right. Yeah, Sugar Salt. I think yeah. I've heard of that before. Yeah. I've, never actually, yeah. I've never seen or read it, but that's cool. Um, so what, yeah, super important. So what, um, so obviously you're working with a lot of seafood there at Ironside, but what drew you to work at Ironside? Like, how'd you end up there? Uh, funny thing, I, um... I was down here and I had uh, a gap between um, uh, LA and, and San Diego. I moved back down to San Diego just because you know it's home and and uh, I grew up you know fishing and whatnot and um, I just kind of happened to call Chef Jason up and um, someone I work with up in LA kind of gave me a great reference and told him like oh yeah he's in really into fishing because that's you know in between the jobs I was that's all I did for like. For that whole month, I was just fish every day. Oh. I'm kind of a freak, and uh, <laughs> so I was doing that. And she was like, "Yeah, he's he's really into fishing." And then I kind of I called Chuck Jason up, and I was got an interview with him, and that was the rest of the history. Well, yeah, great. I would assume that he likes people that fish and <laughs> tie yeah. that yeah. right into the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy it, and uh, I think yeah, I think I'm a good fit in that sense too. So yeah, for sure. So I love the menu at Ironside fish and oyster just because you guys have a lot of really like classic like um stuff that's always on the menu like i always get the lobster roll when i'm in there <laughs> but yeah. you also have so many specials and you're developing kind of new menus and working on what's fresh and in season so what are some factors that go into like menu decisions when you're going and developing like fresh menu using what's seasonal um obviously uh we want to use ingredients that are you know in the peak of their season um so and and that you know going shopping at the market is one of those things where you gotta you know you gotta taste it i think that's number one thing that you know people just like oh there's vegetables i'm gonna buy these because they look cool but uh, <laughs> you know, flavors flavor is a huge thing um yeah. uh i think if it doesn't i would rather things to taste good than to look good Mm-hmm. Tastes good first. Obviously, it's got to look good, but that's that comes easily. I think more easy than one would think. Yeah. And then, um, and uh, yeah, so shopping the market is a huge thing. And then you know, we kind of have to drive the ship. You know, in a way uh, that's kind of goes with uh, whatever the fishermen are doing too. So, mm-hmm. um, and that changes every day. 
Um, so there's a lot kind of goes into it because um, we are trying to just exclusively buy uh, just from the fisherman, which is hard because it's fishing and some days are hot, some days aren't. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it's kind of uh, up to up to whatever the the, the weather and the season want to do with us. Yeah. Are you guys at the <laughs> dock? Where? Do you guys go to the dock every day and uh, pick we up don't, the fish we there? Don't, Mostly, uh, we go on Saturday. Okay. Uh, we pick up some stuff on Saturday, but it's just by via text, really. Like we oh. are, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, all of us are in contact with the fishermen. Like, okay, they're they're out fishing. Uh, like Kelly Fukushima has been out since Monday. Mm-hmm. He's fishing. He's fishing for swordfish. Yeah. Um, and then he'll send me a text like halfway through or. He'll send me just a picture of a huge swordfish. And then I'm like, okay, okay, I got a swordfish on Friday. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really like a moment-by-moment moment on-call type of decision-making. Yeah, so I just got a text from uh, another fisherman. And she's like, oh, yeah, we got sand apps. You know, it's just, you kind of just don't know what's going to come. You, you, you make these, like, educated guesses, like, okay, I'm not going to order that because we'll probably find something on on friday or saturday which is generally the case we always try to find something but mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of a gamble in a way wow. mm-hmm. yeah, I like yeah. That though. so are there things at the when you go to the farmer's market to shop are there things that farmers or food makers can do to appeal specifically to chefs sounds like maybe spreading their text number around might be, <laughs> might be a start yeah the text is always a helpful reminder um but i think it's a, the same as the fisherman you just when you go to the market you really don't know what you're gonna get Mm-hmm. Um, until you kind of look at it, try it, feel it, you know, and, and, and do, you know, the whole sensory thing. And um, when you go to the market, I think it is important to, like, taste taste if you can, mm-hmm. you know. And, and um, yeah, you just never know what you're going to get. So it's one of those spur-of-the-moment things. So, I mean... Have you discovered ingredients at farmers markets that you weren't familiar with? I was just gonna lead into that. I would say yes, <laughs> all, all right. the time. Yeah, all the time. And that's the cool thing about farmers markets that um, that you know, sh- I think a lot of chefs, you know, or maybe the newer chefs don't realize is like you got if you go and dig, you can find some really cool stuff. Or not? And maybe you cherry pick the whole table and you pick all <laughs> the same size things. You know, there's like a lot of. There's a lot of things you can do and use in your toolbox that can it can be benefit to you as as a, as a chef. I think. So it sounds like get there early so you can get the sizes you want. The thing, and- mm-hmm. yeah, get there early. That's number one, and go often. You mm-hmm. know, because you're gonna see you're gonna see what a true season is wherever that is, wherever that is in the country or the world. You're gonna see that what a fava bean tastes like first pick compared mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. when it's farther along in the season it might be more starchy than farther along in the season yeah, might be more ten- yeah. so first, your, first, your preparation would change then right mm-hmm. maybe we wouldn't even go with them if there's too starchy you know gotcha. so uh depends and obviously the first pick on i think what i've learned which is cool the first pick talking about coffee beans is the first picks always taste more tender and more of the fava bean than right. farther along in my <laughs> in my experience have farmers given you tips at the markets about, you know, they, oh, you only want to buy this at this time of year, or if you buy it this time of year, you want to prepare it differently? or Yeah, all the time. Uh, different, you know, they share their recipes, what they do with them at home, and then maybe that's like a spin off of a classic that you want to do, or maybe it's a technique you've ever heard of, you've never heard of, and, and, uh, and maybe it's not them not telling you like what to buy during a certain time, because usually they have. Uh, you know, they have their vegetables there for a reason. And, um, <laughs> and you know, it's it's their peak. Uh, but like I was saying with the fava beans, like it's something I learned about the first pick. Like, oh, you want the first pick because they're the most tender, the most flavorful. Uh, and so, you know, when I was in Santa Monica, that's we would like all the different farmers had fava beans planted at certain times. So it'd be like, yeah. okay, this guy's next. They're going to have, oh. they're going to have some first pick fava beans next week. So we're going to go with them. Interesting. So you can you know, kind of hop around from farmer yeah. to farmer based on the season and when they planted things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it takes a little bit more work, but you know, if you're in tune with it, it's some, it's something special. And you know, I think when I was up there, I learned, 
you know, because uh, Santa Monica Farmers Market is like one of the, one of the better ones in, in California. And I think uh, I learned uh, like fifty percent at the market and fifty percent in the kitchen. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and a lot. I would and I would say that all the time to the to the other cooks, like, hey. What are you guys doing? You got to come to the market. You're missing out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, this is like so much information. And it's like you can go every day and you like meet all these amazing farmers and people, and and it's it's great. Yeah. So. Do you find things other than vegetables and fruits at the market? Do you buy other kinds of foods there? Yeah. Um, sometimes like honey or or, or um, we like honey peanut butter. Sometimes they're peanut oh. butter. Uh, there's a, I always go check out this guy. He's got knives. Like, uh, um, and yeah. he's got cool, cool knives. Like they're secondhand knives, but they're perfect for like, if you're looking for like some butchery items or like maybe a cook, <laughs> they need a knife for a certain thing that they're trying to do. Uh, if they're trying to learn how to cut fish or butcher and, and they usually have those types of knives. You're obviously not going to go there you know, to find like your, your super nice chef knife. <laughs> but, but yeah, those little trinkets for sure. There's oh, so many little little things that people people have, and it's it's awesome. Cool. Have you made relationships with farmers or other purveyors at the market where you find them there, and then you work out a deal where they deliver to you, or do you, are you constantly going yeah. back to the market? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that happens too. That happens too, and then also, uh, you know, be. You mean farmers, and uh, as it goes, you're like, "Hey, come to the farm," and then you go to the farm, and it's like, you could even imagine, you know, it's like from a movie or something. So. <laughs> oh, that's that's for sure. Get that's the great. full experience. Is there something? Yeah. That, is there something that farmers market managers and farmers could do to make it easier for chefs? I know a lot of chefs just, you know, have a problem getting out there, and they need to sit in their kitchen and wait for deliveries. Is there something that the managers could do, or the the farmers could do, that would? get more chefs out there maybe a pre-order system or something like that maybe that but i mean i think it i think it's i think just like in general as a community uh i mean i feel like as chefs we need to get out there and and see it and uh and and touch it and feel it taste it do the whole sensory thing like i said before and i think it's i think it's our job you know to like go Mm -hmm. that step further Mm -hmm. And, and and instead of relying on someone else to bring it to you like go dig for it because you might find something you might find something you've never seen before and you're going to get a better understanding of the whole big the whole big picture of it that's great and it also you know it does a huge service to the farmers because when you buy direct from them they keep the retail price or the wholesale price you know if they discount you some but way more money in the farmer's pockets than if you're buying from somebody that has to cover their own expenses to be the middleman. Mm-hmm. To- I, totally. I think it's also really great PR for the restaurant, too, yeah. because I know, yeah. I'll, you know, I'm at the market three, four times a week, and I'll be like, oh, oh, dang, there's that chef, and I, it makes me want to go to the restaurant more, because I'm like, wow, they're getting the good stuff. Like, totally. they have they have the inside secret. They're at the, you know, they're at the the hub and so it makes me kind of want to visit that restaurant more. yeah chef jason that mike works with um says that very much that just being seen at the markets definitely increases the restaurant business because people take it seriously when they know you're out there getting the fresh stuff yeah for sure totally. Totally. yeah i see that too like just meeting people like hey what, what are you doing with that eggplant uh, <laughs> and uh i just I, you know i i just tell them right there like i do i would do this and this and like like oh yeah, I work in a restaurant. Or aren't I? Oh cool, <laughs> and and it's like hey, come through. You know, and it's great. So Get something it, it, fresh. Win win. Yeah yeah. 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 Sure. So awesome. when you're at the restaurant, since you guys are using a lot of local stuff, I'm sure the seafood gets talked about a lot. But are your servers kind of trained to talk about where your produce is coming from? Um, do the because that's like the face to face with the customers. So do they yeah. kind of explain that stuff is local, or how does that go? Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, try to like be like very transparent with the. Uh, with everyone and just tell them you know this is from this farm yeah uh and i just try to give as much information as i can to them and uh and i probably overdo it sometimes <laughs> well, i don't think you can overdo it but no. you know, over communicate but uh yeah as much as possible yeah and, and you know it's 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 i don't want to say it's easy easy for them to remember all the different farms of fishermen but yeah um yeah 
definitely do that. Yeah, yeah, I know as a guest in the restaurants, I mean, I'm in the industry, so I'm always really curious about it. But I know other guests are, if the server just says something like, hey, we got this, like, even like this one thing from a local farm, it just kind of, yeah. you feel really good as a guest in that restaurant. And you feel comfortable like ordering more food or coming <laughs> yeah. back or telling your friends. So I think that's a really think good, so too. not to make it like just about a PR move, but I think it's just good to get people invested in your restaurant for sure. Totally. So are you trying to say that being a chef is as glamorous as we all think it is, like it is on TV? <laughs> or what is? what are some people, I mean, I think when people see you at the market, they're like, it's a chef, and there's like a little fandom going on, but yeah. do you get a lot of that? And like, how is that, how does the chef community kind of feel about that, where you guys are kind of celebrities these days, and how does that um, affect your work? <laughs> I mean, I definitely didn't like start doing this for like to be a celebrity <laughs> yeah i feel like you know well you're on a people, podcast now i mean yeah. you're famous yeah. right now but, so i mean hopefully somebody can like get some thing educational from it you know i'm not like trying to i don't know i'm just not trying to be famous you know i just want to i just really like to do what i do yeah and mm-hmm. I, i'm in love with the process and mm-hmm. and the relationships that i've built while doing so and uh you know i, I just i'm infatuated with uh, the little things, you know, like peeling an onion, like I'm just, I'm still trying to get faster, you know? Yeah. And I, I feel like if you, if you focus on those little things that, and, and it's, you know, it's a craft, it's, it's a, you're in pursuit of, of excellence. Uh, yeah. And, uh, so that's what, that's why I like, you Yeah. Know? I think the passion that is inside, yeah. like all the great chefs that I know is, you know, at least is just like amazing and. Yeah. I like to reap the benefits of your hard work. Yeah. <laughs> it is hard yeah, work. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks totally. very glamorous, but it's hard work. It's very hard work, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, thank you. I mean, and that, yeah, and like, the, like with anything, like, nothing comes easy, and, and <laughs> yeah, I, feel, I like the struggle, you know, and yeah. I'm probably sick in that way. Yeah. And, <laughs> but that's okay, you know. I think that's kind of a chef thing. Like, my family owned a restaurant when I was growing up, and it was, like, so, we were there all the time, and it was so... We're just sweating and working at the restaurant every single yeah. day, 24 hours a day. And then, but we were just like, this is great. <laughs> like, we're so tired yeah. and we're at the restaurant all the time. This isn't this awesome. Yeah. fun. And people just think it you're nuts. It doesn't make sense yeah. in a way. You're like, what are, you, what are we doing? What are we yeah. doing this for? You know? What are but. we doing? Like crying in the kitchen, but it's great. It <laughs> and luckily, yeah. Ironsides is like probably one of the most beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous. That you can yeah. Out at. yeah. It's not, it's not a bad view. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's such a great place. Well, Thank you so much for like taking time out of your very busy schedule to talk to us. We're going to, we always kind of wrap up with a question of the week. So we're just going to go around and ask kind of a closing question. Um, so the question this week is like, what's your favorite comfort food? Like when you aren't feeling well, what kind of food do you stressed. crave? Yeah. Stressed out, maybe <laughs> working long hours. So, yeah. um, and we'll kind of start here and then we'll bounce back to you. So you have a minute to think about it, but Kat, what do you eat when, you know, you're not feeling good or having a stressful oh, day. Oh gosh, if I'm not feeling good, I'm looking for maybe a simple grilled cheese sandwich and some tomato soup. Yes, yeah. so that's a that's a comforting nice. thing. Yeah, uh, I will admit, sh- with a little bit of shame not not just a little bit of shame that if I'm really really stressed out, I'm looking for ruffles and blue cheese dressing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, that's, that's right yeah. Yeah, I've written a lot of I've written a lot of stories when I was a journalist and working on magazines and things. A lot of stories came out of ruffles. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Whatever keeps you going through the stress. All right, Justine, what do you eat? What do you eat for comfort okay, food? Okay. Um, well, when Dave and I are doing long days in the kitchen, mm-hmm. our goal is to like, at the end of the day, let's go get pho. And oh, that's yeah. always, you know, after like oh, a really nice. hard day's work or if I'm not feeling well or if I'm sick or something, it's just a really yeah. good go-to. It like feels healthy, but it's soothing. <laughs> that's my husband's. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. that's always his comfort. Yeah. yeah. A good bowl of fat. It cures all ailments. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. How about you, Bridge? Well, even though I'm... I eat this when I'm not stressed out as well as when I am stressed <laughs> out. If I'm having, like, a bad day, I just need a really good, like, pastry. <laughs> and it's usually a chocolate croissant. Oh, and I nice. feel like my whole family knows that. Like, if I'm stressed out, they'll just, like, slip a chocolate croissant over to me, like, calm me down. <laughs> slide it under the door. Yeah, slide like it under it. the door. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so usually when I'm not feeling good, I need something, like, sweet. Like sweet and buttery. Sweet and, and buttery. A really buttery. Just butter by itself. <laughs> <laughs> my lobster roll. Um, so, Mike, what do you eat for your comfort food? Man, um, I, I actually do also like pho, too. And uh, yeah. I would – there was one time where I was eating it, like, three or four times a week at this one spot. And I was, like, just nice. in love with it. When I first started, like, experiencing, you know, pho and those types of flavors, uh, I would say that for sure. 
or uh, any type of you know Japanese uh, cuisine or even like sushi for sure. I'm like, yeah. mm-hmm. I gotta have that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we got a couple of salty people here, and Bridget's yeah, yeah, yeah all about the sweet, sweet one. <laughs> in the carbs. Yeah. Yeah, the carbs. There you go. That's why I need to live in France, so I can have my baguette sandwiches and my chocolate croissants, That's and no right, one's guys. gonna like give me the side eye. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, Mike. We really appreciate it. And Thank we, you, guys. We love Ironside and love what you guys are doing over there. Awesome. All right. See you at the oyster bar and see you at the market. See you at the market. Yeah. Yeah. See you there. All right. Thank thanks see so much, Mike. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please leave us a review on iTunes and tell us how you liked today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss the next one. And if you want more farmer's market tips, you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter at IntenseBusiness.com and follow us on Instagram at IntenseBusiness. That's I-N-T-E-N-T-S, business. The 2019 Intense Conference will be held in San Diego, February 24th through the 26th, and we hope you'll join us. This podcast is produced by Intense Business, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded and edited by Justine Marzoni Mead. Original music by David Mead. Special thanks to our guest, Chef Mike Reedy and San Diego Markets.